monitoring stage is where all the health and safety comes in. Because up until this point, you haven't really been able to injure yourself. Well, no, you can. So make sure you've got some safety goggles and put on an apron or a clothing cover, preferably something heat proof, so that if you accidentally pin your hot metal fingerprint necklace onto your lap, it won't burn straight through your clothes. Put on some sturdy enclosed shoes or boots for the same reason as before, just in case you flick it onto your foot. Place your fire brick onto the center of your hard flat surface, making sure it can't move around or tip anywhere. Put a digital timer over to one side where you can clearly see it counting down. Have a bowl or a large mug of cold water immediately to one side or close by. Have a set of tweezers ready so that you can move your hot fired fingerprint necklace from the fire brick into your bowl or your mug of cold water once the firing is complete. One thing, a really important note, you don't have to pick up your hot freshly fired fingerprint necklace with these tweezers. They won't really have a chance to get hot, but all the same, my own tweezers do have this safety wooden handle to stop the heat traveling from the hot fingerprint necklace up the metal and burning my hands. But it's not, it shouldn't be a problem anyway. If you faff around and you're using completely metal tweezers, they can get hot and then that could potentially be dangerous. So try and look out for a set like this or just avoid picking it up if you can. Before you start, completely fill your torch with gas because you don't want it running out part way through. It should already be filled up. If possible, draw the curtains or the blinds in whichever room you're in. Having the room slightly darker can help fire your, it can help you fire your necklace because it makes it much easier to see the firing stages and the color changes. Your room doesn't have to be pitch black, just a little bit dim but you definitely don't have to wait till night time or anything. Closing the curtains will be absolutely fine. And now you're ready. Just one quick note. You can only fire these necklaces because they're small. You will always need to use a kiln to fire large creations. You will also need a kiln to fire some other types of metal clay. But this necklace here is only two millimeters thick and it's smaller than a 50 pence piece and it's made of fine silver. So torch firing, it will be absolutely fine. You need to place your dry fingerprint necklace in the very center of your firing brick. And you need to set your digital timer to two minutes. You need to turn on your torch and adjust it until you can see a blue flame. It might be slightly orange, my flame is completely blue. Now you need to wave the tip over the entire surface of your fingerprint necklace, keeping it quickly and constantly moving. You need to keep it moving because otherwise there's a real risk that you will melt it, which would be a terrible idea. So just watch it carefully. You will see a small flash or a small fire appear over the surface of your necklace. See the small amount of smoke just drifting off of it now. Now that's as the organic binder burns away. You need to keep your face back. As soon as that little flash of fire dies down, like it has now, your piece will start to glow a lovely peachy color. So we're just gonna wait for it. Keep it moving all the time. Sometimes it takes a little while. There we go. Starting to go just a little bit peachy. Right now, as soon as you see that peachy color appear, you need to set your two minute timer counting down. You still need to keep moving your torch, the tip of the blue flame, over your entire surface of the necklace the whole time. Don't freak out if it looks like your necklace is curling up around the edges. That's because it is, it's completely normal. It will settle down flat again, so you don't have to worry about it. You have got to fire for the full two minutes. That's the minimum firing time to ensure that the fine silver inside the necklace is completely sintered. Sintering is where all those tiny silver particles inside your necklace reach a temperature where they can stick and bind together tightly. 
The silver in silver clay jewellery is always scented silver, which is why it's different to the kind of silver that you'll find in traditional jewellery on the high street. Traditionally made jewellery is made from molten metal, which is brought up to its melting temperature and then poured into a mould where it's set solid. The fine silver that we create from silver clay isn't quite as strong or robust as that traditionally made silver, purely because of the way the silver particles are joined together. But it's still lovely and it's perfectly fine for keepsakes like this. As long as you're not going to wear it to swim in the sea and in the shower and wear it, expose it to loads and loads of wear and tear. Jewellery from silver clay can occasionally break, especially if it's dropped from a height or mishandled. If your necklace does break, which would have to be pretty unlucky, you would see that the inside of the necklace has a kind of rough and stony appearance. This doesn't mean that you haven't made your fingerprint necklace properly or that you haven't fired it for long enough, which is a really common misconception. What you're looking at is the sintered silver. So, on the off chance that you have it run over by a car and it does break, the problem isn't you, it's just the nature of silver clay. You can fire it for a little longer, there it goes. You can fire it for a little bit longer if you're not confident that it's 100% fired, it won't hurt it, as long as you don't melt it. But just watch out, it needs to keep on glowing that lovely peachy colour. This colour is completely fine. Just watch out for anything that looks melty, shimmery or shiny like the inside of a volcano because that would be bad and stop. Don't ever, ever be tempted to fire it for less time because then the silver particles won't be completely sintered. But you definitely need to avoid anything that looks bright or shiny or melty orange. You might notice at this point that your necklace looks a little bit like it's shrunk, and that's because it has. It's perfectly normal for PMC flex and other types of PMC to shrink to about 12% of the original size. And that includes the little hole that we added for the silver jump ring, which is why we made that hole a little bit on the large side because we expect it to get smaller. Once your two minute timer is up, you need to gently poke your necklace into your waiting mug or your bowl of cold water with the end of the tweezers. You don't have to pick it up with the tweezers. In fact, it's probably best to avoid that just in case you mark your necklace. Okay. You might have noticed there that the necklace hisses a little bit as the hot metal touches the cold water. You can, of course, just leave it to cool naturally in the open air on top of your fire brick if you have the time and the patience, but you don't have to wait. Now, it'll be cool quite almost immediately. So we can use a spoon and we can scoop it out of the cold water. You can touch it and feel that it's completely cool. And if you gently tap it, you'll be able to hear that it's got a metallic sound and it's not clay anymore. It sounds like metal because it's now silver. So now you finally have your silver fingerprint necklace, but it's kind of white and has a strange kind of white chalky surface. So at the moment it's not quite finished and it probably doesn't look how you imagined, but we're gonna finish it in the next stage.